live from America's leading corn producing state, Iowa. It's Wapiti Live. To serve the herd, I'm your host, Dan Erickson, and today I want to explain why you shouldn't use a website builder, even though I do. So that's my intro. This is my first podcast in a while. I'm going to come, I'm accompanying it with video so we can have a little fun and uh, I can get kind of back in the groove. Uh, by the way, uh, how do you like my shirt here, huh? Check out the Wapiti. This is from uh, my graphic designer. He's a photographer, lives in Montana, and uh, uh, he does really awesome, really awesome photography and so forth. Also really awesome graphic work. Um, and uh, he made this shirt and I'm a pretty big fan of it. So um, today I want to talk about website builders. There is a really strange, completely pulled apart view of builders. You have on one side, you have a lot of small business people and um, some graphics people who don't understand web, who live by the web builder. They live by Squarespace or Wix. Um, and we'll get into a bunch of these options later because they don't know how to do actual web design. They don't know how to manage and build a website. But these builders give them an element of comfort and give them a product that doesn't look horrible. Now, saying it doesn't look horrible is is definitely putting a, it adds the caveats right there in that phrase. But that is one reason why a lot of uh, people use these services is because you don't have to be knowledgeable. You just have to know how to log into a program and drag and drop a few things around. Um, I want to compare that with some other platforms. Um, you know, the, the two platforms I met, I just mentioned, um, we'll get into in a moment, but there, there is that group. And then there's the other group where we don't use a builder ever. We won't. They're for novices. There's never a reason to use a web builder. I happen to be in the middle of this argument. I lean towards the second side, but I'll explain, and this will all make sense as we move forward. So let's hop in here. First, I want to talk about some of the more popular web builder platforms. You've got Wix, you've got Squarespace, you've got Weebly, there's probably a dozen others. Even GoDaddy offers a really simple, simplistic web builder program. They are great for that small business person who has no budget for anything and has lots of time on their hands. Now, there's a few things I'm going to throw out here to begin with is, first off, there's very few scenarios where all of those things will add together to make a business that will work. If you have no budget for anything and you have a lot of time on your hand, you probably don't have a well-functioning business. Now, that seems obvious, but there are exceptions. You know, if you have a full-time job and have started a business on the side, um, you know, that there are moments where these builders can actually play a really big part. And, and I think they serve a purpose in this ecosystem. But once your business becomes an actual real business and you're making a little bit of money, maybe not going, going crazy, but you're making some money and you're looking for ways to invest in your business, these builders are not how you want to do it. And there are monthly fees incurred with them, even though they're not super expensive. Um, you're paying basically for somebody to own your own website, own your code, own any piece of information you give them. And if you choose to leave, there's going to be a big copy paste job or, or potentially you're going to lose your site altogether. And that's because with these builders, they technically own everything that's yours. Um, yes. in their wording, they, they say, you know, it's all your information and we won't mine it. And all. I'm, I'm not really getting into the privacy side of things. I can't speak to that, to be honest, but I'm getting into the straightforward fact that once you stop paying them, your website disappears. There is no easy export and import to another platform because they don't want you to leave. Um, they call this, oh, wait, wait, I heard, I heard this recently. Um, Oh, it's the, ho the, the Hotel California, you know, once you, once you, you can come and you can leave anytime, but you won't, um, you know, that you basically become a captive customer because you're reliant on their ecosystem. And it isn't until you get enough money saved up that, um, 
exploring another option becomes, or exploring a different platform becomes an option. So for that reason alone, I'm very anti these particular builders. The one exception that I mentioned before is if maybe this is a part-time, you know, you're building something new on the side while working full-time at a, at a, at a business to pay the bills. Um, these become acceptable platforms and work great for that. Once you become a business, then we move into the next phase of the builder. Um, personally, uh, myself uh, in my business, uh, we work on two platforms. We work in WordPress and we work in Shopify. Um, both of those uh, kind of play into the Shopify is very much more builder oriented. Yes, you can custom code templates. You can get somebody to custom code for you. They're more extensive. They tend to be more difficult and often can cost more. Uh, on the same vein, with WordPress, depending on how fancy you want to get, they can also cost quite a bit if you're getting custom coding done. So let's talk about the WordPress ecosystem for now. With WordPress, there's a hundred builders probably. I, I don't know exactly how many, but some of the big names are, you know, WP Bakery has um, what they call uh, uh, the what do they what do they call it now? Do they just call it WP Bakery? Um, it used to be called um, uh, Visual Composer. They renamed it. It's the same product. They just renamed it for some reason. It's it's a very very functional backend editor. I would, if I were looking at Wix, Squarespace, Weebly, but I knew how to quickly spin up a WordPress website, I would probably use WP Bakery with that. Now that's a big caveat. And that's going back to that, I can't afford anything else because I'm working a full-time job and I, I only have so much time on my hand. That said, it puts you in a platform that you own because with WordPress.org, you are in control of your website. If you stop paying, yes, your website can go down, but you can easily pull your website off and move it somewhere else. Um, so with that, WP Bakery is kind of what I would say is probably one of the primary competitors to Wix, Squarespace, and Weebly as far as simplicity and ease of use. Now, there are some more difficult parts to it too. So I don't want to just say that this is purely easy and, uh, you know, and all these other builders, um, for example, Elementor provides a, a really robust ecosystem of add-ons, but it adds a lot of basic things in other areas that become challenges. There's the Astra Builder, which is actually part of a theme. Um, I've got to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience, so I can't speak either way. But once again, you're limiting yourself to what these builders allow you to do. And yes, you can extend them. Developers can build extensions to them. But there's a, in my mind, there should be a line between what a developer is needed for um, and what you should be able to do with a designer or even potentially in staff if you know a little bit of HTML and CSS. So these are really dividing the development community from getting a product really quick um, and, and easy with, without spending money. There's also Beaver Builder. Um, there's also probably a hundred others that I've forgotten. Ultimately, these are all really awesome alternatives to the Wix, Squarespace, Weebly space. And uh, in my opinion, some of them are far more powerful than those tools and you can host your own website where you want to. So the WordPress plus builder ecosystem takes that a step beyond. And for somebody who is building their own, if you could figure out how to get a WordPress website set up, which a lot of companies will do that. Uh, my company does that. If you just want a vanilla WordPress install and you want to host with me, I will spin that up for you and put it in your court. Um, with that, um, it keeps it in your, in your hands. If you ever wanted to leave me, you ever wanted to leave another hosting company that hosts WordPress, it is very easy to pull your site off. Matter of fact, you don't even have to let them know. You can spin up a separate host, migrate your site and say, okay, cancel my site. I'm done. It's, it's that simplistic. Okay. All in all, once again, these are great if you don't know what you're doing and you don't care about how you look on the internet. Just to be frank, to be totally frank. There, there is an exception where you've got a person who's got a graphic propensity who, who actually does make it look good. But 95 times out of 100, uh, you have somebody who builds a site and they're proud of it because they built it, but the reality is, is it's not a good site. It's not good visually. It's not good with calls to action. None of it is what the ideal website would be for their business. And that's all because they did it themselves. And if they had the ability to think beyond 
I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to do what this builder gives me. And they go, this is actually what I want. And, you know, I'm hiring a company to do this. So I can actually tell them what I want because I'm going to pay for it either way. Um, once you get to that point and you get out of the, I'm going to do it myself. This is where you hire an agency. Now, Wapiti uh, is, is an agency. We do hosting. We do the whole gamut. Um, the, the goal of the goal of Wapiti is to basically uh, cover everything from domain names to hosting to um, security backups, all of that, all the way through the marketing spectrum from you know web design, um, conversion optimization, SEO funnels, all of those things. So we cover that full gamut from the web. Um, with that, we do web design. Now, as I said earlier, we work on two platforms, Shopify and in WordPress. Uh, probably nine times out of 10, I recommend WordPress. Shopify is great. It's preset. You can do some things pretty quick. And as a novice, the back end, the admin section is um, much better, uh, much easier to use, I should say, not necessarily better. So you get that from Shopify, but with WordPress, you get everything else. And that's the truth. WordPress is open source. So anybody can add on to it. And there's a million add-ons. Shopify is closed source, but they do allow things to be added to it. And there is a big development community for Shopify as well. With WordPress, you can choose your credit card processors. You can choose all these other pieces. With Shopify, they are your credit card processor and you pay them monthly to host your site. You, you don't get a choice. You're with Shopify. With WordPress, you can pick your hosts and all those things, like I said earlier. So I just went through a bunch of reasons why you shouldn't use a builder. Now, I'm going to tell you why I use a builder and the reason that I feel that this particular builder is an exception. Um, if you're a web developer, um, you know, my, in my case, I am a, what you would call a front end developer. I work with HTML and CSS. Um, I know CSS, I can code in my sleep. Um, I also work with JavaScript a bit and uh, sometimes a little bit of PHP, which is more backend, but um, pretty much all the languages that are connected to the WordPress ecosystem, I, I know enough to do most of what I need to do. Um, my team knows WordPress and they know similar parts. And I also have development people that I can rely on who know the PHP side of things can do the full coding to get WordPress to do exactly what we want to do in the JavaScript and the jQuery and all that. So if we have all this talent and all this knowledge, why do we use a builder? Well, there's one builder that I found that seems to be the answer to all the problems. Now there, there may be multiples. I'm not saying this is the de facto standard, the only one. But thus far, out of everything I've poked at, there hasn't been anything that's quite approached this builder. And this is called Oxygen Builder. Um, if you do a Google search for Oxygen Builder, you can find it. It's relatively inexpensive. Now, here's the deal. Oxygen is not your simple drag and drop builder. You're going to, if you're looking for that Wix style builder, but one that you're going to use because you're coming here for a recommendation, you're going to be disappointed in Oxygen. Oxygen has a huge learning curve. That said, Oxygen uses coding and design standards to allow you to build a site. So it has a frame. It has like all these buttons you can click and little boxes you can type in numbers. It all seems pretty loving and, and friendly. But, you know, you have to know whether you want to add margin or padding. You have to know... Um, you know, how, how to do the background attachments to make the image fit the way you want. That said, if you know how to code, Oxygen cuts development time by nearly a third. It can, it can, I should say. It doesn't always, depending on the scenario. Bigger projects for me typically take a third of the time it used to. Um, there's a benefit to this for both me and my clients. Um, first off, I can charge more an hour. I'm not, I'm not cheap on an hourly basis. That said, I'm also not expensive on a full project basis. And that's kind of where the fun comes. Um, because of the way Oxygen works for me and for my business, I can do so much more in the same amount of time as hand coding. Like I said, if, if you're saving, let's, let's just round it. I, I know that in certain projects I've saved a third, I've, I've, I've 
done them in a third of the time. That's a huge savings. But let's just do it at 50% because that's probably more realistic in most scenarios. If I can get a project done in 40 hours by hand coding it, this would be a you know, somewhat smaller project, um, and I'm charging $100 an hour, that means that that project is done in 4,000. It's basically a $4,000 project. Now, if I can get that same project done in 20 hours, but I raise my rate to 150, which is my retail rate as of this recording, I'm now getting that project done for $3,000, but I'm putting in less time. Now, the reason I raise my rates is because there's more investment, there's more time spent in the ecosystem learning and training. Um, that said, it actually is a net positive for both me and my client. They save money, I save time. And that together creates a really, really good uh, synergy. So the average user can learn oxygen. It's not incredibly difficult. It is, however, not intuitive to somebody who doesn't understand coding off the get-go. There's a lot to learn. I have a buddy who I uh, helped him get a site going, and I spent hours with him. And now he's finally got it. He can finally do quite a bit on his own. But he wasn't a coder. So none of this stuff, you know, he kind of, he, he pokes at websites, and so he knows a little bit. Um, so some of it kind of made sense. But on the same vein, he wasn't a coder. So it didn't all make sense. Um, I have clients who uh, knew enough that they picked it up and they now do their own websites. They now are in control of how things work and they reference me for training videos and they reference me for um, help and so forth. And, you know, my team, we all take care of them. Um, so where am I going with this? Well, I'm hoping that anybody who listens to this episode um, or finds this video, assuming I put this up on the site, I'm not sure I'm not in the videos that much. Um, I'm hoping that you hear this and you go, okay, so builders are bad. <laughs> they, 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 they can be, honestly. I, I think that builders, um, by dumbing down the process, it does appeal to an audience for sure. But I think it's overall bad because it empowers people who have no idea what they're doing to do something that they do poorly. And it represents their business. Um, that said... At least one builder is good. And there's there, I would I'd like to throw in here before I completely wrap up and leave. There is one other product that I'm aware of, and it's it's outside of the Shopify WordPress ecosystem. Um, it's called Webflow. And Webflow um, has a very similar interface, a very similar style to Oxygen, but it's its own platform. And once again, like Shopify, you, it does the hosting and everything for you. You keep it in Webflow. And I think you could pull it off of there, but um, I still am a big fan of the empowerment that WordPress gives you because you can take your website at any time exactly how it is, move it somewhere else, stop paying one person, start paying another. Um, if you know you have a new web person that you hire and he's more familiar with something, you can actually move it to what he's more familiar with than, um, than whatever it is you're on, which ultimately will save you money. Whenever you hire a web company, if you let them work within their familiarity, you're going to save long run quite a bit. So to wrap this up, here's what I have to say. If you're planning on building a site yourself and you are not a web person, if it's purely just to save some money because you want to put it somewhere else, I'm going to tell you right now, this is your business and your business online is important. And if you really think that you can pull this off and make it look good and work good, more power to you. I can tell you in the majority of conversations I've had with people who are proud of their websites, I find all sorts of usability problems, all sorts of user experience problems, and half the time things they think look really good don't. Um, and, and obviously looking good is subjective, but there's a lot of things that are kind of tried and true in the industry that you know either are good or not. And I see these problems all the time and people are proud of them. So if you're considering doing this, I want you to think really hard about this. If you can only afford 50 bucks and you have time, okay, um, go for it. If you want to invest in your business, you need to have an agency put it together. And, and obviously this sounds self-serving coming from an agency. Um, 
I'm only saying this because I believe it. I started this whole agency because I wanted to help small business people. I didn't even know what I was going to do. And that, that's a whole nother horrible uh, idea when you start a business. And that's, uh, I've done previous episodes on that and that's a whole nother episode in and of itself. But that was my motive. And I came into this realm because my skill set was here, but also because my motive is to help small business people um, and, and small nonprofits too. Um, and I'm telling you right now, you don't want to do it if you can help it. You want to have a professional site built. Um, that said, not all builders are created equal. And if you're coming here trying to learn about what builder to use, especially if you're in the WordPress ecosystem, um, I highly recommend looking at Oxygen Builder. And you also have a support team if you ever need it in my company. Um, they have a pretty active development community too. So you can find quite a bit of developers and people who can help you as well. Um, that said, with Wapiti, we, we do WordPress design. Um, it's been a while since we haven't done an oxygen site. That's that's how ingrained it is, it is in our business. Um, but, uh, you know, we can handle pretty much anything WordPress throws at you. Um, we have a very highly tuned hosting solution that's that's high end. It's it's more expensive than most. And that's that's on purpose. If you want the best hosting, the best security, the best backup system, then, then call us. Um, if you're wanting cheap, you know, you got GoDaddy and all these other junky hosters. And that's your choice. So I'll wrap it up here uh, after, after making some poignant statements at the end. And uh, thank you for listening. Um, it's great to be back recording. And uh, until then, we're going to keep serving the herd. <laughs>